Welcome to Stitch Crazy. My name is B. Odie, and today we're going to be making a crown royal quilt. And you can see the quilt behind me here. I've used bags of crown royal bags to make this quilt. So the supplies that you're going to need today for this quilt, you'll need a sewing machine, of course, um, a cutting board, um, cutting tools, a scissors, your thread, crown royal bags. These are the bigger ones, but they're, most of them are smaller than this, but I got a few bigger ones here to cut out. Um, your background fabric that you need for your quilt, a backing, batting, those are some of the supplies that you're gonna need to make this quilt today. Okay, so first of all, um, you'll need a bunch of crown royal bags. Um, you can get them from people that own um, like a bar because every time they buy a Crown Royal bottle of whiskey um, they it comes with this Crown Royal bag wrapped around it um, so that's the first is to gather those bags up if you get a chance and then we'll have to cut them apart um, the ones that are on on this quilt here um, they have the the thread that goes all the way around um, this one here that I have the bigger bag does not so our first step would be like the planning part of it. How many bags do I need? What size do I want my quilt? Um, I do a lot of um, grafting on paper. Um, the size, I measure like the size of the finished product, my finished bags. And then I decide how big I want my squares, the square to put this bag on and my sashing, which is the little strips of fabric in between, and the width and the length that I want my quilt. And so I kind of draw, uh, draw it out on paper to decide how many bags. Now, if you want to just wing it as you go, you just take your bags and you just cut your blocks and put these on as you get your bags. Say you only get a couple at a time. You can always do it a work in progress. Okay, so today I'm gonna take, um, this bigger bag that I have, and I'm gonna show you how I cut it apart. I utilize the stitching that's on the bags. So this one would be a bigger square. And I'm gonna utilize even the strips that are in between here. I take and cut the front and the back apart. And these strips are used for my sashing pieces. I sew them together and I make a sashing piece or a strip whichever you want to call it. Okay, so first of all, we're going to take our bag and we're going to cut it apart. Have a very sharp scissors, decide what you want to do. Now, you can cut this off if you choose to, the thread, but I used it in mine because I thought it decorated the square a little bit more. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut just along the edge of that stitching. Don't cut into the stitching, but just as close as you can get. And we're gonna cut all the way around the bag. And you can leave a little more if you want. That's entirely up to you. I get as close as I can to the stitching without cutting it. But you can leave like a fourth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, which, whichever you want all the way around. Normally I would use a little smaller scissors, but I forgot to bring it with me. So we'll use this one today. And this is kind of time consuming. You know, you can take and when you're preparing these, if you want to watch TV, you can take them and do a card table out by your little chair and cut these as you're watching TV and you wouldn't believe how time flies. So now we'll, I'm almost done with this one side here. And I cut all the way up to the top. Now on these smaller bags, um, they have these little, little rivet things. I cut those off. I just cut them as close as I can to the rivet and then once we get all our bags cut like this, I just fold this under when I'm sewing it on. 
and I'll show you how to do that too. So we would do that to the other side. We would cut all the way around. We'd have two pieces, one with the emblem on it and one plain, and then we have our strip piece. So then you can just, you know, put your ones with emblems in a pile, ones that, that don't have the emblem and all your strips together. Okay, so now once we get all these bags cut and we try to figure out what size block we want, this particular block that I made here, um, there's no right or wrong with these quilts. It's whatever fabric you want to use. Um, the first quilt that I made, um, my black background was plain yellow. Now this one is kind of a variegated color. And this is going to be for a man, this quilt. So I figured it's, if it was yellow, it might get dirty. So with the variegated, you can't see that as much with the guys. So then what you do is you figure out what size you want. And on this particular one, this is 11 by 14, 14 long and 11 wide. And then what I do is I take, and I try to just kind of eyeball it, or if, if you really want to make it perfect, you just fold it in half, kind of press it down, and you can fold this piece in half to get it exactly in the middle. And then you can also fold it this way too, if you want to get it exactly. Like here, this is my middle, and that's approximately my middle. And you can also fold them, you know, like this way to see where your middle's at and fold your fabric this way to see where your middle's at. So this would just go over a little bit more like that. And as you go, you, you can just kind of generally eyeball it or I measure like this to this. Take your finger and measure it up and over here to kind of make sure it's close to the middle. Okay, and then what I do is I take and I pin these pieces on. I usually pin up the top here at the bottom and one on each side. So, and I'm usually doing multiple ones at a time. So I, that way they don't drop off your piece. And then you can just keep doing your bags until you got them all pinned. And then I will um, bring my sewing machine up to the table and then I will show you how to sew this on. Protect your investment with Smart Farm Monitoring from Valley Telecommunications. Get video surveillance cameras for your home, shop, or barn. Sign up now and receive 5% off of Clear to Their cameras and one month free of off-site storage. Valley Telecommunications, the home team advantage. Okay, now for sewing, um, usually I do purple top thread or monofilament thread, which is kind of a clear thread, and so that you cannot see the stitching on the quilt. Okay, so then when we're taking it, bringing it to the sewing machine, I have these two little flaps. I'm just gonna bring them over and then I'm just gonna sew on top of it so that it will stay in place. Okay, so I'm bringing that over here. Bring my foot feet in here. And I'm just gonna take this and sew it. And I sew as close to this um, threaded color as I can, because I want it to just kinda lose the thread in the sewing. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of keep going. And then I'm coming to it around to the curve, and so you just kind of have to take your time around the curve so that it doesn't pucker on you. And we'll just kind of gradually, you can stop many times to kind of make your um, bag just kind of lay down on your fabric. And this block is actually called your background fabric. And that can change with every quilt. Okay, we're almost to the top. 
top here. And then I have this little um, piece that's out, so I'm going to fold that under. And then when I get up to the top here, I'm going to kind of just make sure that that gets caught in there. And then I like to back stitch. Okay. So once I have this all sewn, this is what it's going to look like. Okay. And then I bring my threads to the back. Just bring them to the back and then tie a knot and um, cut them off. And then if you can't get the thread easily, you just take a needle here and bring that to the back. And then I just usually tie the threads. If I had backstitched more, I would probably just cut the threads off. But as being as the threads came through here and I didn't really backstitch too much. So on the, on the first one, I didn't backstitch at all. <clears throat> and that's why you have the little scissors and you can cut these excess threads off. Okay, so now once we've gotten all of our blocks sewn onto our squares, then we're going to put um, the strips We're going to take a, a piece of um, that bag, the size of the bags, which I call sashing or a strip, and then I sew those onto each of the blocks. Valley Telecommunications, the home team advantage. All right, so I'm going to take the sides of the bag and then I am going to sew them on the edge of each block. So I'll take it to my sewing machine here. And I just kind of line it up. If you want to pin it, that's entirely up to you. And I just usually take about a fourth of an inch seam with this. If you're uncomfortable, you can take a bigger seam. That's, a, that's entirely up to you. So now we have one sashing piece sewed on here. And then what I would do is um, I would iron it so that it lays nice and flat. And so you just keep, um, what I do is I lay all my pieces out and then I usually make my rows. I put my sashing piece, my block, a sashing piece or strip or whatever you want to call it, and then make my row. So this is what I've done here is I've made the whole row. And then once I get all my rows on, sewed, then that's where I put, oh, there's some threads hanging here. Um, there's, that's when I put the strip in between. And I have a strip on the top of it and the bottom. So now like this one here, um, what I would do is I would put the strip all the way on the top. And this already has one here. So I can add this depending on where I want to add it, if I want to add it to the bottom or the top, it doesn't really matter on this quilt. Um, but what I did is I kind of have a pattern here. I have a plain one, a one with the emblem, a plain, emblem, plain. And then my next row is just the opposite. I have the emblem, plain, emblem, plain. But if you want it, you can mix and match however way you want your quilt to look. There's no right or wrong. Okay, so then I would sew this on to make your quilt complete. So you just keep working each row until you want it the length and width that you want it to be. Okay, so that is really all there is to making this quilt. Now there are other colors of these Crown Royal bags now. I have this one that's kind of a grayish looking color 
and I guess there's green ones and brown ones. I have not seen those other colors, but I, do, I know the purple ones have been around for a long time, and there's new colors with each flavor, so. Sign up for HD or DVR from Valley this month and receive two months free and free installation. Call us today at 437-2615. You don't want to miss out on this offer. Um, this is like my fourth quilt that I made with Crown Royal bags. Um, the very first Crown Royal bag quilt that I made, um, we made with the plain blocks, um, with a plain background, and then the blocks are set up similar to what we have here, a plain one, an emblem, plain emblem. This one has squares in the middle. We have the strips just on the side, and on the sashing part, or the middle rows, we put blocks to um, make this one different. On the back of this quilt, we used two pieces of fabric. We alternated in huge blocks. We had a couple extra bags, so we just left them. Um, now, when I'm making these here, they're open on the top, so you could put something in there if you wanted to. You could make like a small wall hanging. Um, okay, and then I made a second one where we made a variegated, which is similar to this. This picture, when I took the pictures, they turned out more blue than they did purple. But here we did the block at an angle, and we used this fabric. And so that is just a, um, and then the quilt actually looks like this. So it's kind of flip flop. And then on the back of that one, um, we also, we did, I used up the material so the blocks are not even. So, you know, you can make your backs any way you want. You don't have to have just one piece of fabric. You can, um, if you just want to use up your fabric, this is a good way of using up your fabric and making a back out of it. Um, the third quilt that we made, I used blue jeans and kind of a purple fabric to go with it. So I put my bag on the blue jean and then had coordinating fabric. And this is what it turned out with the colors. And so, and then now this fourth one here where I've got the variegated and then with the blocks. So there's many ways you can do it. Um, I've seen where some people just use the emblem part of the block. And um, another one too, um, a friend of mine made a, an, another Crown Royal bag quilt. And what she did is she took these bags and then stacked. She didn't use backing fabric. She just used the, like the Crown Royal bag itself and then just stacked them. Sewed them like that into one row. So there's all different kinds of ways you can make this quilt. So I hope you've enjoyed my show today and I hope you make yourself a Crown Royal quilt. If you have any ideas or would like to be a host on the show, give me a call at 437-2615. Thank you.